Hi everyone, here's a little short summary of tissues using some models. Um, let's first of all look at the epidermal tissue or the epidermis. You can see this pink outer layer in the stem, our pink outer layer in the leaf and our pink outer layer in the root. And now you can see on all three of these we've got this outgrowth called a trichome. So let's have a look at our models. So this represents the epidermis. It will be going all the way around the edge. Same here, all the way around the edge like that. So let's have a look at the cells. They're tightly packed with no air spaces between. So that's, stop, that's to stop predators like aphids piercing them or things eating them. Um, and also tightly packed to prevent water loss, especially from the leaf surface. If we look at the top of this, I don't know if you can see it, but I put some sellotape there and that represents the cuticle. So on the surface of the leaf, oh, let's turn it the right way around, on the surface of the leaf, um, the cuticle is particularly important, it is on the bottom as well, but it prevents water loss. And you can see these outgrowths here, represented by um, this elongated cell here, the trichome. Um, that is a little hair that you might see on the surface of a leaf or the surface of a stem. However, if it's in the root, this trichome is now called a root hair. It's the um, very fine root hair which absorbs water and provides a large surface area. And obviously in the root, there is no cuticle on the epidermis, otherwise it would not be able to absorb water as the cuticle is water repellent. So that's one representation of the epidermis. This is another one. So this represents the lower epidermis in the leaf. So you can see, again, tightly packed with no air spaces between, but we have here um, again a modified type of cell called a guard cell and you have a guard cell either side of these openings in the lower leaf surface which are called the stomata, one's called a stoma. So it's the stoma that allows gases to enter the leaf such as carbon dioxide, oxygen to leave the leaf and also water to leave the leaf via transpiration. So the stomata are really important in gaseous exchange and transpiration. So that's our epidermis. If we now look at our packing tissue, which is the, the large yellow areas in the leaf, the stem and the root. Packing tissue or parenchyma tissue is usually uh, large um, oval shaped cells with a large vacuole um, and they do have air gaps or spaces between them which is really important um, particularly in the leaf. So that just represents general parenchyma cells, loosely packed, large with vacuoles. This one represents parenchyma um, in the leaf. So these long ones represent the palisade mesophyll cells at the top of the leaf. And this is where most of um, photosynthesis occurs because there's a lot of chloroplasts in the palisade mesophyll, which are parenchyma cells. Below, we go back to our more oval shaped large um, uh, cells which are again parenchyma cells, but in the case of the leaf, we call them the spongy mesophyll cells. So in the leaf, we've got two sort of different ways to describe the parenchyma cells, palisade mesophyll and spongy mesophyll cells. And obviously this is the main place where photosynthesis occurs. Our final lot of tissue is we're going to look at transport tissue and meristematic tissue together. So here we have on our leaf, we've got our phloem and our xylem with the meristematic tissue between. 
on our stem we've got phloem and xylem with our meristematic tissue in between and on our root we've got phloem and xylem with our meristematic tissue in between. So this represents um, our phloem and our xylem tissue. So if we just turn it round. Let's first of all look at our xylem tissue, which in the root is in the centre. And I like to draw it with four lobes, so it's X for xylem. Okay, so in the root, the xylem is in the centre and it is the shape of an X if it's got four lobes. So this xylem tissue is made up of xylem vessels here, which are quite wide where the cross wall is completely broken down to form a continuous column that allows water to travel upwards very quickly with no obstacle. We also have another type of uh, cells called tracheids, which are narrower, tapered at the end and have pits and joined together. So the water travels up these as well. So that is our xylem tissue. It transports water upwards and is made of xylem vessels and xylem tracheids. It also is reinforced with lignin um, for support. So it does give uh, woody plants um, some support, um, so especially in trees and, and large shrubs. Um, yeah, so that's our xylem tissue. And here we have our phloem tissue. So this is made of sieve cells end to end called sieve tubes. And in between each cell, it's perforated. It's not completely broken down like in the xylem, it's perforated. Now the phloem tissue transports sugars in solution. And in this case, they move in both directions, up and down. So the leaves have made sugars and they may transport it down to the root for storage, for example. But the sugars are transported all over the plant and used as required. Phloem tissue is made up of two types of cell again, the sieve cells, which do the transporting, and the companion cells, which support the sieve cells. The sieve cells have no nucleus. It's the companion cells which um, support them while they're doing this process and provide energy for the active transport of the um, sugars. The companion cells have uh, large nuclei and they also contain a lot of mitochondria because a lot of energy is, is required for active transport of phloem. So we've got our xylem tissue, our phloem tissue, and in the middle we have our vascular cambium in the case of a stem and a root. Um, we can see the vascular cambium um, is arranged in a circle in the stem and in the root you'll just find it between the phloem and the xylem. The vascular cambium obviously is not a tube, it's a, it's a solid um, set of cells which are again closely packed with very prominent nuclei because they're going to be dividing that little spindle in the in the uh, nucleus will be you know dividing making new genetic material so the, the uh, nuclei are very prominent um, and these the vascular cambium gives rise to new xylem and new phloem tissue so it is the uh, meristematic cells which are the cambium layer which gives rise to secondary thickening or lateral growth. So this is where these meristematic tissues um, divide and move outwards, it therefore increasing the girth of the stem or the root. So that's a brief summary of uh, the different types of tissue using those little models. So I hope it was helpful. Um, yeah, I hope it was helpful.